Green is great. Green is good. Green is the plate when we eating good. Green is grass. Green is cash. Green is life. Green is growth. But most of all, green is go. And with that being said, let's chop it up and let's get this green up, man. Yeah. yeah, okay. My name is Jay Green. This is Jay's Green Room, also known as Green Room TV. Clocking in, locking in, checking in with Carl Crawford. Carl Crawford, the 1501 King. That's right. For sure, That's for sure. Time. Yeah, yeah. So my goal is to give like a timeline of understanding. You know what I'm saying? Right. You were a professional athlete, Major League Baseball, right. transitioned into... Uh, an executive, music executive, mm -hmm. 1501 certified. Right. Where you from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Fifth Ward, Hardy Street to be exact. 1501. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just like any other kid born on the north side of Houston. They just wanted to do something with their life. Right. And not, you know, straying the other way. Straying away of all the other things that was around you. Uh, sports was a good way for me to just stay focused and, uh, you know, channel all my energy into doing something positive. And, uh, you know, I just tried to do the best with what I had. For sure. When you was coming up in Fifth Ward, did you ever feel like you had a lot of distractions as far as staying focused away from the street life? Well, I mean, you know, everybody's in the street, basically. All your friends, you know, like everybody is like, you know, somewhere hanging out somewhere and you see everything that goes on but the group of guys that I hung with coming up during my time you know sports kind of really helped us we had um Salvation Army Boys Club where um we can go where they come pick us up from our elementary school and um we go over there and play basketball and you know do all the little things throughout the seasons football whatever and uh that seemed to keep us away from you know all the gang stuff that was going on or you know, around dope from dope fiends and stuff like that. You know. Straight up. So you you kind of you kind of like one of the very few people who feel like you've lived kind of that thing about like you know what I'm saying how nothing it comes from something. Right. Yeah, it come yeah. from nothing. You know what I'm saying. Um, just just wanted to like have a better life. You know, I had a chance to experience when I um when I, my coach came and got me. Coach Bond, Michael Bond's dad, he came and got me. And, you know, took me out to his house when I was a kid, when I was playing for him. Showed me his house for what the age, first what time. What age was that? I might have been like nine, okay. nine, ten, something like that. And, uh, you know, he took me to his house. And, you know, as soon as we pulled up to the driveway, immediately I knew that's what I wanted, you know. Um, and I set out to do that. Uh, I'm from the same neighborhood as Jay Prince and George Foreman and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, Historical. So I remember, I remember playing football in the streets one time, and so I, I remember just the reddest Porsche just pulled up while we was playing street ball, and um, sure and behold, George Foreman gets out the car. Yeah. Now mind you, <laughs> now mind you, you know I played with, I grew up with all his cousins and stuff, and they, they say, um, yeah, that's my cousin all the time. That's our cousin. You know, you don't ever see it, so you like whatever. You don't believe it. But this one day when he pulled up and got out that car, I mean, I just, I couldn't even, like, I just was still, it was like I was stuck, you know what I'm saying, this car was just so red, he had this bright bald head getting out this car, and he was just calling them all by their nicknames, you know, yeah. and I was like, I was like, damn, like, I was so starstruck, and immediately I knew that that's what I wanted right there, I wanted to be able to be like that, and be able to drive back in my neighborhood and do the same thing. And that, that's a blessing because, you know, a lot of times in the hood, they, it's the it's the dope dealer, it's the right. pimp, it's that person. Right. But So when you seen George Foreman hopping out that, that car, right. was that... That changed my life. Was that before your coach took you to his house or after? Oh, uh, man. I think that was before, uh -huh. you know. That probably so was before. that was before. the first time it really... That was the first time it really just dawned on me that I wanted, like, something other than what was what we had over there. You know, up to that point, I never saw nothing like that. Straight you up. know, so, and then, you know, the Coach Bond thing came, because I'm still in the hood when I saw George Foreman. When, I, when Coach Bond came and got me, I went to, other parts of I went to the other part of Houston yeah. that I never saw, Umbo at the time, and I yeah. was just like, you know, I couldn't believe my buddies, they had their own rooms, they had their kids <laughs> and stuff, like, I never saw none of that. Yeah. Me and my brother shared a room with one bed, you know. You had a so, lot of brothers and sisters or just one no, brother? No, just one brother. Older? Yeah. No, younger. Younger, okay. Yeah. You know, but shoot, we shared a bed all the way up to middle school. Mm. So, um, and that's only because I left to go to stay with my daddy. But, shoot, man, you know, okay. I had, you know, I was, I went and saw a house with 
Bell rooms, pool tables, and backyard yeah. basketball. I was like, man, this is the life right here, you know. Like it's funny like because that. he like always thought I had this wonderful life because, you know, I guess when you in the suburbs, you know, you dropping the kid off in the hood, you know, all you see is movement. You know, you just a kid running. Like even myself, I wouldn't go in my house. I'd jump out the car. You visit your dad? No, like when my boy Michael Bourne, his dad, oh, okay. you know, he'll, you know, they drop me off and he'll be like, man, we want to stay at your house. I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell your mom, tell your mom, ask your mom, can we swap places with him, man? I would gladly let you stay over here. That was But up. you know, um, you know, that's how it was. That's what's up, man. Okay, uh, would you consider yourself, okay, younger, coming in from that age, going into, like, junior high, right. would you consider yourself, like, one of the most elite, like, athletes? Athletes? Yeah, in that I area coming I was. In? I just thought, you know, I'm always creating myself, especially from that neighborhood over there. I just, you know, I would take on anybody. It didn't mm -hmm. matter, even from a youngster. Like, I, my dad was good at basketball, so he had me on the court, like, as a kid, like, as, like, a two, three-year-old. I was on the court with grown men, so mm -hmm. by the time I got... Seven, you know, six, seven grade. It was, you know, I've been dominating <laughs> for a long time, you know. <laughs> All right, so.